Yeah. I think so too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Hi, y'all. Hello, everybody. Oh, Aaron says we can hear you now. Is that the no? I think we got it right like the first time yet last week. We too, did, huh, but we had other issues. Better. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gavin's head kept like, you know. getting small and then it was large and then it was oh, small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole thing. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, literal or is this a metaphor? What it was just his camera. It? His camera kept resizing for some reason, and I couldn't adjust it on my end. And I don't. It was a thing. It was funny though. It was a good laugh. That's true. It and actually, laugh. while the lamp limelight is on Brian, yeah, everyone notices uh, California quail in his shirt. It looks pretty amazing. I mean, just want to point it out. Yeah, just... Talk about fashion forward. That's double double snap from the alliance. <laughs> Another burb nice. shirt for a burb stream. <laughs> love it. Love. It. I still need to invest in some. I don't have any burb shirts. Sorry. What? No. Oh. I Ooh, I agree. I like that. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Here we go. No burb shirts. I don't yep. have a burb shirt either, but I am going to, I think really like mm. for the office on Wednesdays, we need to be having um, some wacky shirt Wednesdays just to liven it up, make it a little crazy. Let's see what happens. Let us know, Aaron. Awesome. Taylor's tinkering uh, with stuff. Well, if this is your first time joining us, oh no, can't hear me. That's fun. <laughs> Let's see. This is the fun game that we play. Hey, I didn't say it. Uh, Christmas gift, me? everyone. Like Christmas gift. <laughs> So there's two options for my audio and my OBS, and it's oh. the other. Oh, so um, no. Aaron can let us Owls. I have so many owl me ornaments, or... owl salt and pepper shakers, yeah. but I'm, I'm still loving it, so I'm, I'm okay with it right now. Gross. Don't call me that again. <laughs> no, it's called a kara kara. Kara kara? You ever heard of that bird before? No? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yes. I do remember that. Yeah, think, yep. think, yeah, think about but it. But you did do a pretty epic owl sound yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Butterflies. I mean, you know, and they're very different. You know, one, kata kata, it's like a brrr, kata kata brrr, and they throw their head back. And then we we did owls, right? The <laughs> my barn owl's not so good. It's like every time. <laughs> they move their head around, Amazing. you know? My burring owl's not that great, but it's kind of like. It's super that just sounds like a really great. tiny person good. trying to play the trumpet yeah. to me. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's like a burring owl with a weird accent, you know. I'm I'm from San Diego, so it's a San Diego uh, owl accent. This, that is very true. It just and that's never a good segue gets too, old. Really looking at those. Never gets old. I yeah. love it. <laughs> You. I got I got some more if you guys want them, but I got. Oh, some that more. reminds me. Did I turn on the command that um, does the animal noises? Is animal noises oh. on? Change cam is on. Oh, yeah. Oh boy! Animal noise isn't on. All right, let's turn it on. Hang I on. Wasn't, oh, I wasn't. I wasn't even going we'll to it say on. anything. <laughs> Taylor, I don't even know if you saw this from last week when you were out of town, but um, we got Gavin to do like a, a laughing hyena sound, and it was probably the most epic thing ever. Oh my god! I need to record that. I, we can play it all yeah. around the safari park. Yeah. After this stream, I, I think he got through it. like. Go take a look. I think he got through like maybe like. A quarter of it before he started laughing, but you know. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'm gonna go find that and make it a highlight, and then I'm gonna send it to him on his birthday. Yes, <laughs> you gotta make it into a meme or something. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, my god. oh man, awesome! So if you guys haven't joined us before, now that you can hear all of us, um, this is Wild Watch with us, and basically what we're gonna do this week is we're gonna go through burrowing owls because we have Marco, and Marco's a bird guy, and. Uh, we're going to go through some field cam footage that is set up by actually our scientist in Southern California, and we're just going to tell them what we see. And sometimes it's cool stuff. Most of the time, it's a lot of owls, and that's awesome, and we have a good time. So let's dive in. It is good stuff. I haven't seen any grumpy owls in like last week, so mm. I need this in my life. We, we need uh, some grumpers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that's decently grumpy. I think that's a good start. I, it's yeah, not a bad like, start. Yeah. You know, I'm getting like, I just woke up. I'm the first one out of the burrow. I wanted to enjoy my nice quiet morning. And now 
I get the colony coming out and bothering me, right? Mm-mm-mm. Look at this guy. I have the neighbor with the head turning all the way around. Ridiculous. Just to show off. Oh, you're flexible in the morning. <laughs> Must be nice. Show off. <laughs> I know. It's like my husband in the morning. Look at me. Look at me. I can see yeah. Kobe just wakes up and he's like, oh, I just feel like doing, you know, toe touches and... I don't know. Uh, yeah, he he's like a golden retriever in the morning. I am more like an owl, like this guy right here on the right hand side. That's more my style. I enjoy my. By the way, this is a whole different conversation we could have. But I was telling him like I enjoy mornings as well. I am just not a golden retriever. I am a raptor. You know. So you just there's a difference. Yeah. May, may I ask you guys what animal do you identify with in the morning? Let's have our, our listeners put that down to hmm, Taylor's ass got really big. Hmm. It, it should Damn. be like your first like instinctual animal, like boom, your subconscious is telling you, like for instance, Brian, what's the first thing that comes to mind? My Mastiff Rushmore. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. it's like super early and I'm not about it. And like the blankets are like up to like, you know, like right here. Mm. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm sick of this. I'm like, I'm, I don't even want it. I can't, you know. And then I just like peel myself out and I'm like, <laughs> Go to the shower, you know. <laughs> All I that. Think, All right. <laughs> honestly, I think the first one, since you mentioned the first one that popped in my head was a Tasmanian devil. Don't ask me why. Okay. But they have that little burst of energy at first. And they're like, okay, like we're up for a second. And then they lay back down and sleep. So like, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I respect that. I respect that. What about you, Taylor? I, know, what I you can't got? think of an animal that's like me in the morning. Because that's how I am, too, is like I wake up and I'm up and let's do stuff. And then around 11, I'm like, wow, I could really use a nap right now. Exactly. Ooh. So I'm trying to think of something that maybe takes a midday I'm nap, a, like maybe yeah. a rhino or something. I'm, I was just going to say rhino. Every that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> First, I was going to go, I think tail is more like a mega herbivore. So some kind of herbivore, right? And then rhino is the first thing I thought. Because, you know, they got all excited. They have some breakfast. And then... And they're also super oh. food, food motivated, and breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. So I'm always waking up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, yes, I get to eat breakfast. Awesome. Uh, there you go. So there exciting. you go. <laughs> oh, cute. Aw. Oh, that's lonesome. Look at the little face. I was going to say, that's a little bit of a grumpy face, kind of. I know, right? You see his eye, his pupil is pinning. It, yeah. Right, that, it's constricting. Makes me think like he's focused on something. Like maybe it's a little juicy grasshopper. Maybe there's a well, no predator. I was gonna maybe a predator, but no. His body language means to me like he's leaning forward. Right? There's a funny line on a movie called "Why You Were Sleeping" with Sandra Bullock. There's a character that goes, "Hey Lucy, he's leaning." So I mean, like, he's leaning, like he's leaning forward. He's looking at a grasshopper. He wants to eat something. I'm gonna stop doing this because it looks really weird. But that's kind of what I got. I feel like that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I see two. You guys see the other little one? Just, just right there. out there? Oh, yeah, right in the corner. Yeah. Let me see if I can listen. Give me a huh. second. There he is. Oh, yeah. Two. Oh. Great. Nice job, team. Utah. Give me two. I don't see Sorry, him. I had to. Oh, he was just so camouflaged. I almost <laughs> didn't even see him. Oh, Your there's two reference. of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh. he's doing like the, like the walk, you know? He's kind of like the Sasquatch, you know? You guys ever see that old footage of Sasquatch walking? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's what he's doing. He's doing the mini Where Sasquatch. Where did he come from? That the he literally just out appears. The... Oh. Yeah, he, he just oh, popped yeah. out of the burrow super quick. And the other guy doesn't move at all. He's just he's just watching this guy like he's, materialize. He's just judging silently, judging. He's feel that. totally judging. Like you went out that tunnel. Ugh. <laughs> Do you think that burrowing owls get like that? Like, I mean, all animals have a preferred way to live to some degree i would yeah. imagine so i oh, wonder totally. if it's like yeah. well that's mm-hmm. the good tunnel and you got the good tunnel so wow now i can't have tunnel. <laughs> oh yeah no they they have like their schedules i know the ones that i was uh managing at condo ridge you know one the male he had his favorite little perch at the very top top corner in fact if you guys ever cruise the safari park you head out there um uh, that male if you're staring at the habitat top left high perch is his favorite spot. I think because he can like look down on everyone, you know, just surveying my my area. So yeah, I think everyone's got their favorite little niches, you know? Mm-hmm. Kirsten and I were just talking about that. Was it this week when we were at the zoo, we were walking by the, the harpy eagle and it was like mm-hmm. finally in the tree, like in the middle of the habitat. And oh, I was yeah. like, oh wow, it's like, that's such a great spot. Cause every time I walk out and like try to get some footage of him, he's like on his perch, right? you know, in the front. Oh yeah. So you just never leave. Oh, it's totally. Like yeah. <laughs> I bet a lot of our listeners too, like when they're driving to work in the morning, for those of you who work now, uh, you might see like, uh, the very same Hawk on a post for instance, yeah. you know? So 
They definitely have like their favorite little vantage points, you know? Yeah, I, I oh play volleyball in South Mission. And so we always drive over the bridge that goes over the San Diego River. And every morning yeah. there is a hawk that sits there. And I would imagine it's because right there, you know, the tide gets kind of low. So there's lots of creatures and fish and stuff that he can yeah. go find. Oh, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and ghost chicken. Not ghost chicken. chicken. <laughs> Baby a, ghost chicken. A cute little fluffy chicken. He's really I fluffy. know. Look at his little face. And he's been tagged. Good for him. Oh, man. Did, oh, there it goes. Okay. I was like, did ghost alert break? It's done. Did it's it go? Oh, no. I feel like Kai and Opie and Wildcats must not be on today because. I was about to say, where's everyone? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, they're probably getting ready for Butterfly Jungle happening this weekend. You Tell know, us about that, Martin. On. It's Butterfly Jungle. Did you not hear? <laughs> butterfly Jungle. You know, let me get this <laughs> close to my to my mouth here so I can talk to you in these dulcet tones. Everyone, immerse yourselves into a rainforest experience this year, this weekend, <laughs> happening March 18th to May 14th. Butterfly Jungle. So, okay, I'm going to stop. But it's Spring <laughs> Safari. It's called Spring Safari, everyone. You know, it's <laughs> Beautiful, right? Who doesn't love springtime? Flowers, colors galore, and you too can experience butterfly jungle during spring safari at the safari park. And again, you go on our website, sdzsafaripark.org, and all that information is out there. But it's wonderful. If you're not familiar with it, we have a structure. It's a giant greenhouse that's normally referred to as hidden jungle. A plethora of different bird species from around the world. My particular favorites are Central and South American wildlife. And you get to see a lot of that. And during spring season, we actually are working with organizations around the world. For instance, one in Costa Rica where they do butterfly farming. So they protect parts of the rainforest, like this vibrant um, wallpaper behind me right now with the Hawaiian alala. To give you an idea, you protect local land instead of say farming for maybe a vegetable item that you may want to raise money for to feed your families which is totally legit but instead of doing that you can actually help support communities and they preserve this raised butterflies local plant life help local species out helps the community out and we also have this wonderful celebration to talk about it so don't forget you guys wear all your bright colors like for instance you see that shirt brian is rocking out today that would be an awesome shirt to wear during butterfly jungle you want bright you want to look look fabulous right and you want to track those butterflies so highly recommend it that's marco do they still give you they give you the little um nectar for you to have oh yeah yeah exactly yeah so you get this little nectar um tube with a flower on it and it's it's really cool and then you you pick your spot that's my recommendation find a corner somewhere and so I, sometimes i see people just like standing in the middle holding their flower and there's other people walking around them i'm like no 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 don't be like them. You want to go like in the area specifically where there's corners where a mess of flowers are congregating together. Go stand by those and just hold your flower and just just be peaceful and just enjoy the experience. Like a little guy right here in front of the the, the um, entrance to his burrow, right? Just hold still and let nature take its course. Amazing. I feel like everybody else is walking around trying to get the attention of butterflies and Marco's in a corner somewhere just zinned out <laughs> yeah, just kind of butterflies. <laughs> my butterfly call oh no i don't know what butterflies sound like but. it's yeah if you can make that sound it's not even on the human registry for sound and it's no i was gonna do a weird like wing thing but I, they don't even do that no there's no i'm sound. gonna go with that yeah that's what, that's what they sound like somewhere <laughs> i don't know it's official <laughs> oh look at all those feathers doing a little bit of preening cleaning themselves up in the day right we love uh, oh, talking about springtime, look at all those beautiful flowers mm -hmm. that are growing around that. To me, that looks like a cucumber vine. So now, oh, look, the little guy right outside, like, no, I don't want to go outside. I'm going to sleep right here. Is cucumber vine, Marco, do you know, like, is that cucumbers or is it just what that species of flower is called? This is a local, I was actually out in our, at the safari park, it's 1800 acres and we have a 900 plus acre bio reserve. So if people aren't familiar, our safari park incorporates a lot of local habitat that is crucial, endangered, protected habitat. So I was just out there with uh, Dr. Rosa learning about all these species and we came across a lot of this cucumber vine also. This is a local plant species. So not the cucumbers that we're familiar with at a grocery store, but again, it highlights the vibrancy of our plant and animal life in Southern California, you know, especially talking to Dr. Rosa who came from Florida. Um, he had a hard time connecting. I mean, look at this picture 
picture right now. Look at the the topography behind the entrance of the borough. For those of you who are not from Southern California, it may look just like a dry, barren place. But when you really get connected with the land here, you understand that it doesn't look like maybe Florida or maybe Massachusetts or the East Coast, but we have our own unique species that are only found here, which is why we have the most endangered, threatened habitat anywhere in the United States is right here in Southern California. And it just highlights all these amazing plants, rain we've been getting. Now we're seeing species super take advantage of that. There was a picture that we did a wild watch, you guys. I don't know if you remember. It was this specific burrow, and I had mentioned there's a little bit of cucumber vine growing. Let's see what happens throughout the year. And now I'm seeing flowers starting to bloom, which is Awesome. So another segue to back to springtime, especially the safari park. The zoo is amazing too, by the way, but you know, I grew up at the safari park, so really highlight it. Right now it's an awesome time to come to the park. Just cruise around and see all the beautiful plant life out there. Very cool. Uh, on that topic though, obviously Southern California yeah. and Northern California, especially has gotten a lot of rain. And since yep. these guys live in little burrows, I mean, how big is the risk of, you know, burrow collapse or flooding? It's a possibility. Yeah, uh, not to uh, be too negative of it, but these are things that can happen out there in the wild. But luckily, you know, nature finds ways of trying to avoid scenarios like that. So I'm not saying it's absolutely uncommon. It could possibly happen, but there's things that they do. For instance, there's various kind of burrows, some that go down and up to avoid flooding systems like that. And remember, these guys, they're not really building their burrows. They're relying on other species that do those adaptations. So ground squirrels, uh, specifically the desert tortoise, for instance, a desert tortoise can dig a burrow more than like six feet down into the earth, even longer than that in some cases. And many of them have tunnel systems that will go this way, others shoot, shoot up away up above to avoid getting a flooding but with excessive rain that can still be a general concern so it's possible but i don't want the public to be too concerned because again you know nature finds a way and uh they have really interesting mechanisms that way are you thinking jeff gold i can see brian's eyes right now giggling. Right? it's so funny they just brought that up because aaron said that in the chat right now and it was just like oh she did oh that whole i can't see the chat like, so i didn't know but yes i know I know. I mean, we try not to bring up Jurassic Park references, but I'm all about it. I'm such a dinosaur nerd. And by the way, I feel we, the Safari Park, the San Diego Zoo, we are the real Jurassic Park, in my professional opinion. I just agree. want to point that out. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, my God. Look at that little guy. Oh. I like how the wind is blowing his own feathers into his face. I know. <laughs> it's really cute. He's, like, got a little mask He's so on. so fluffy. <laughs> look at that. Oh, that's great. Oh, my gosh. I love him. I really want to see one of these prey deliveries at some point. That would be super cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You haven't seen one yet? No, I haven't gotten to see one. I think you guys saw one one day when I wasn't able to be on the stream, and I haven't seen one yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. That was the only one I think we've seen so far. Yeah. Mm. And I think it was the first time we did burning owls. Am I the only one hydrating? I've been sipping on this tea for a while, you you guys. You can sip on your tea, but uh, nobody's in chat. Oh, that's right. If you guys want to hydrate us, how do I say that? Hydrate us. Hydrate us. <laughs> you want to encourage hydration? <laughs> encourage hydration. Yep. <laughs> what does that SpongeBob mean? The water. water. Yeah. <laughs> pinky up. <laughs> oh, out, look at pinky that. Out. You never watched SpongeBob, did you, Marco? No, uh, no, oh. sorry. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> okay, we love you anyway. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'm more of a Ninja Turtles kind of guy, you know. Oh, that's fair. Grew up with, you know. Already, Marco. Animal noise just came through, and it's for you to do an elephant. Oh man, I do a terrible elephant, but I'll do it. Even better. Watch it be great. I got to use (laughs) my arm too. So okay. Do not spread this around. This is terrible. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to do it. It's okay. (laughs) Just go on the internet. (laughs) That is my elephant. I am awful with the mammals, but thank you, thank you. Perfect. That was pretty bad. I'll, yeah. Yes. I, know. I said it was bad. And I still have to do – I can't even do the sound without the arm. I got to do the You have to thing. do the arm. You can't even like – oh, my God. <laughs> so no, what is your – if right you were way. trying to mimic a trumpet sound, like you know, you're t- listening to a song and you're trying to – how would you do that? 
That's what I do. That's that's my trumpet sound. How's that? You know, there you go. This is a good day for me. I really enjoyed that. I want to make that yeah, my That was really great. Chat loves yeah. it though. I said good job. So well done, Marco. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the embarrassment. I only do it for you, Twitch, just for you. This is a okay. Twitch exclusive, Marco content. This is Twitch exclusive. <laughs> Subscriber only content. When you like this it, is what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, look at him, little preenie. That's cute. How common are parasites? Because I feel like I remember when I was a kid, my mom would say, like, you know, don't don't get near any birds, or if you do, wash your hands because you're going to get a disease. Mm. So how common is that? I mean, I have I have two comments to that, Taylor. One, human hands, I think, are more gross than a lot of birds you may encounter, yeah. <laughs> for one. Yeah. Uh, two... Parasites are part of life, right? I mean, it, they're all part of these nuances. I was just having a conversation uh, about ticks in the area, too. And now I know some of you are kind of like, ticks, gross, right? Gr cringy. But these animals are important. They're part of a food chain. There's a lot of other reasons why they're in the habitat. Some we don't even know about what their benefits are. So parasites are a real thing that happen. Now, um, I don't want to color it up, but sometimes there could be some more detrimental parasite species. In fact, there's a few that they're monitoring. So when the conservation scientists go out and they ban and they check on these burrowing owls during their, their processes throughout the year, there are two particular species. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's two particular ones they're looking out for because one could be detrimental, especially for a younger burrowing owl who's still trying to develop and may have to suffer You know, the, the conditions of being... Um, fed upon by a parasite basically so um there are different variations of that you know so another interesting conversation that i often have with people about uh zoo versus wild you know and i understand this is all coming from especially like aren't these animals better off in the wild and this is a loaded topic so i actually hesitate even bringing it up but this is what i want to leave with you guys right now think about the wild versus um a place like say the san diego zoo safari park for instance i am constantly offering resources to the species under my care so when i was managing burrowing owls every day they are guaranteed food every day they have fresh water um we also do processes that check their health and the conditions if they happen to have a parasite tailor then we do things in our in our power to help them get rid of those parasites in the wild that's not the case now i'm not saying it's better off with us versus the wild but all i'm saying is that to go through out in the wild or even a local deer think about the ticks that are attacked are attached to a deer's body for pretty much all that ticks lifespan until it's ready to drop. So these are, you know, these are things animals have to contend with and deal with. Sometimes uh, it's a symbiotic relationship, and by symbiotic meaning both animals kind of have this relationship, unspoken relationship, where they're benefiting from each other. Some are not so symbiotic, right, and may actually take advantage of an animal, and that parasite will move over to another uh, animal, and, and so on and so forth. So how's that for a loaded that question? That was great, though. Yeah, yeah I mean, good. super thorough. <laughs> Yeah, and on that, Marco, um, yeah. Birdie Slomo Sloth asking where these pictures are taken. So can you give a little more insight about their uh, their habitat and location? Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, we have two main areas in Southern California that we're doing these conservation projects. So if you're not familiar with San Diego County, uh, one particular area, if you're looking at a map, it's a little more southeast of um, what we call downtown Escondido, an call, area called Hamul. Um, now, there's another area, if you're looking at a map, in Escondido. You look at Escondido to a town called Ramona. There's beautiful country out there. And so the, we have a release site out in the Ramona areas uh, where we're monitoring uh, burring house also i was afraid you can ask me to do another elephant sound so i'm really happy mm, that i get a different sound i know right <laughs> it'll probably be a mammal still oh, come on. <laughs> i kind of want to hear a peacock sound so i'm i'm oh, really hoping somebody I mean, will i need you guys to turn down your volume if, if you want me to do a peacock sound but I'll, I'll wait for a request from a guest i can turn your volume down so when that happens i'll just turn your volume down and make sure that okay. you don't blow any speakers yeah. out <laughs> It's pretty loud. Is is Kobe home? Is he going to hear you if you do that? No, luckily he's not home right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you guys don't know, my my, my husband Kobe, he actually works uh, in the Alliance as well. So he's uh, down in Mission Valley at the moment. Uh, so I get the office. And are these adult birds, Marco, or juveniles? I say, from what I can say in the picture here, the first two in front are juveniles. I'm going to guess the one in the back is a juvie also i'd like to see more of like the downy oh with the face hmm that one's hard for me to tell 
I'm gonna if someone like forced me to make a, a guess, I would say it's probably an adult. Just I don't know the position. You know, if it was a baby, it can, I think the baby would be next to his other brothers and sisters. But this one's looking over a rock. It's looking a little more like focus, like making sure there may not be predators nearby. So that would be my guess. Just reading on the behavior. I'll go with it. That sounds good to me because I right? mm-hmm. have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> oh, so great. Do do you think we have repeat listeners from the our owl conversations from the past? We probably do. I can I can I ask them? Way. Yeah, I remember a while ago we talked about what makes a raptor a raptor. Do you think we could ask them if anyone can guess? What do you think makes a raptor a raptor? Now I'll give you a little hint. There's the term bird of prey and the term raptor, and to me they you can't really switch them around too easily. Mm. There's a difference mm. between the two. I feel like I wasn't potentially on or I just have really bad memory mm. retention, which is very possible because I don't know the no. answer to that one. So this is kind okay, of okay. And I don't have the chat on me. So let me know if I should give out the answer now. Or wait a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Wait a see. Okay, in a sec. I yeah. don't let me see know. anything yet. Trying to, can you, I don't know, would it be cheating to list some examples of raptors? No, no, actually. Okay. I'll mix them up. Um, Raptors. I'm going to say Crested Karakara. I'm going to say Burring Owl. I'm going to say Harpy Eagle. I'm going to say Secretary Bird. I'm going to say American Kestrel. I'm going to say Osprey. I'm going to say White-Tailed Kite. Peregrine Falcon. Barn Owl. Snowy Owl. I can keep going. <laughs> but, <laughs> so we're talking uh, what makes me... a, a raptor a raptor? Yep. A raptor? What makes a raptor a raptor? We haven't heard from Chet yet. I don't know. I, for whatever reason, feel no? like it's like oh. something to do with their feet. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. I'm going to have to say you're absolutely right on that. Yes. So think about, <laughs> think about what Brian just said to you guys. Think about a – I'm going to give you some birds that are non-raptors that I consider birds of prey, right? So think about a pelican. Think about it. What does a pelican do? It hunts, right? It hunts fish. In my opinion, that is a bird that preys on something. And I even go bigger than that. So I even I don't know if you guys have ever seen a Phoebe before. They're found in San Diego. They eat bugs. Little like a bug black Phoebe? Hunters. Yeah, like a black oh, Phoebe. Yeah. yeah. And and some people may not may not agree with me on this one, but I like to like, you know, draw outside the line. In my opinion, I consider that a bird because it is preying on something. It's preying on an insect. So maybe general context consider a bird of prey but that's kind of where i think about but i just like to play on words and think about you know the nuances of it so when we're talking about a raptor like brian said that is mainly what raptor means so when we're looking at these guys they're showing you the two tools that in my opinion make a raptor a raptor the one right now we're highlighting on the preening look at that beak so it's not the main reason why they get the name raptor but it's one of the adaptations raptors have is a hooked beak so as opposed to the alala behind me who i also consider a bird of prey by the way because they can eat lizards and frogs and whatnot or an omnivore i take omnivore also which can eat you know plants and meat raptors have a hooked beak so um you know we're all wildlife people so i'm going to give you an example it may sound a little graphic so if you're a little more unicorn sunshine and rainbows maybe um switch over for a second come right back because we don't want to lose any viewers but basically i'm going to give you a falcon example a peregrine falcon fastest animal in the world what a falcon's going to do dive over 200 miles per hour straight for their prey so for instance they are shooting through the sky at up to 200 miles per hour going for let's say a pigeon when they get close to that prey They're going to tuck their talons, like Brian was talking about, into a ball. Then they can either do two things. They can knock the bird right in midair, flip right around, grab the prey with their talons, which, by the way, fighter pilots can't do without blocking out. That's why peregrine falcons and falcons Mm. are so amazing. But what then the beak does is because they're holding their prey and they have longer toes for a wider grasp for grabbing birds in midair, which we'll talk about in a second, but they use their hooked beak to hook the vertebrae, the neck bone of the prey item and snap the vertebrae in that respect that beak is used for i was just going to say look at this picture the beak yes can be used to snap the vertebrae of prey but it can also be used for love and affection like they're doing right now preening each other so it is a multi-purpose tool it is for love it is for killing how great is that right so but it works really great uh but really a raptor as brian was saying it means to it comes from a latin word it means to seize or to grasp and so the general structure is three Oh, look at that. Three three toes <laughs> in the front chicken. and one toe in the back. The back talon is called the hallux or the halix, and that's the one they use to 
take care of their prey. Uh, Brian is a big Eagle fan, so I'm going to point out some Eagle differences with talent just to show you how varied it can be. Um, not we're Philadelphia talking, Eagles, people. Not, not Philadelphia Eagles. Not no. Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. Thank you. Lord, Thank you. No. Not, not those. <laughs> no sports. Um, Harpy Eagle. Harpy Eagle is a group of eagles that are called the monkey eating eagles. These eagles, like the African crowned eagle, can carry off an antelope, 40 pound antelope, 80 feet up in the air. These are eagles that hunt mammals. So, like the harpy eagle, their feet are extremely muscular and powerful. A difference in the talon structure I mentioned the falcon, right? Falcons grab birds in midair generally so their toes get longer and more narrow so not as thick and strong like a harpy eagle may be burrowing owls and owls they have a raptor foot but oftentimes with a raptor like an owl you'll see two toes in the front and two toes in the back you can kind of see it with this photo mm -hmm. i know it's in the dark but i can just barely make out the two toes in the front now what's interesting is some species of owls like the great horned owl which is the one i do the call about a lot the you know the um they have the two toes in the front and the two toes in the back because other birds like a parrot, a perching bird, and by that I mean a bird who's sitting on a branch for long periods of time, nature gives them the perching foot or it's called the zygodactylus foot. So it's two in the front and then two in the back and that supports the bird's weight sitting on a branch. Owls sit on branches for long periods of time most of the time, right? When they're hunting, they're a stealth hunter. So they have the two in the front, two in the back. But what happens is that outer talon can rotate forward and form three in the front and then one in the back like the standard raptor foot, which is crazy. Oh. And so you notice with these guys, sometimes every now and again, I don't see it as frequently with the barn owls, I mean with the burrowing owls here, but most of the time you're going to see them with the two in the front and two in the back. But remember, the raptor to seize, to grasp, right? Which is really cool. That's crazy. Mm. Wow. I had no idea. See, something's really cool. messing with me now because at the beginning of Jurassic Park, remember Dr. Grant says raptor means bird of prey, but he was wrong. Ooh. I mean, uh, well, you can say this. A raptor is a bird of prey, but not every bird of prey is a raptor. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we I was about to say. <laughs> here it is all over again. <laughs> this turtle's all over again. You know what I mean? That makes sense, right? All raptors prey on other animals so they are technically a bird of prey it's a bird preying on something but not every bird that preys on something is a raptor like the pe uh, the pelican i think is the best example for that you know that's a good one yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. the pelican Ooh. i hate pelicans the pelican i can't tell if that's a rock or a casting in front of those three little babies i, I thought maybe it was a leaf it's kind of hard to tell oh maybe yeah or yeah, yeah. unsure are these these are babies because they're fluffy right yeah, they look like babies to me. Little babies. Little babes. Ooh. Squad. I know, right? How many do we see here? One, two, three, four, five? I can't tell if there's one sitting behind the three. I can't tell either. Ooh. You, you yeah, know what I mean? Question, oh, Aaron. Definitely looks like something's there. It almost looks like there's one behind there. What did Aaron Marco, ask? quick question. How many eggs do burrowing owls typically lay at a time? Oh, I mean, it, it can it can vary depending on the season. I mean, I think I've seen as low as five. I've seen as much as like nine eggs, eight, nine eggs. Um, oh, look at those guys. So what's great, and this actually brings up another idea, the idea of resources, <laughs> right? I'm not going to have a lot of babies if there's a lot of resources out there. So a uh, great horn owl, I like to use that one as an example for most owls out there. Sorry, I got distracted by the, <laughs> the, the little really owl funny. shimmy. The motion's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so like a great horn, let's say a great horn um, during breeding season. If they live in an area where there's not a lot of resources, and by that I mean there's not a lot of good food availability, they can probably lay around one to two eggs. Now, if there's a lot of food in the area, a lot of resources – the female is going to produce more eggs, maybe three to five in a clutch. And by clutch, clutch is like a, a group of eggs being laid by a female. So same thing with the burrowing owls, you guys. And think about it. That mother, that female, is producing all these eggs. It takes a lot of resources from mom. So it makes perfect sense to me that if a female owl is in an area that doesn't have a lot of resources, it makes absolutely no sense to – Waste, not waste, but you reallocate all these resources to lay a bunch of eggs where then most likely than not, not all of them would survive, you know? So there's interesting little adaptations with nature in that regard. Hmm. I feel like they say Very that with um, 
some mammal species too is that when there's a big rainy season and there's a lot of food there's more likelihood for multiple births versus just a couple yeah yeah definitely you know gotta gotta take advantage on those resources i think adaptable animals to me are amazing in that regard that they can change their behavior and adapt depending on the season that's so crazy i know and then i it's funny actually i went no go go ahead. ahead marco no, it's a funny story about resources because I was uh, at the reptile store getting some food for my little tarantula. Oh, oh, I thought it was a different raptor for a second. No, it was a burring owl. I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, no, that was a burring owl. Um, so I'm getting my crickets for my, my tarantula, and there's, I'm waiting in line because a gentleman in front of me, um, he's sharing a story with the, the owner of the store about crows and how you know he's so upset. There's so many crows in his area, and he was thinking of things to do to get rid of those crows. So I, in my very polite way, uh, interjected myself in the conversation because we're out in public, you know? And so I just let him know, like, you know, sir, we should appreciate and respect wildlife that can adapt even with the encroachment of human beings in our habitat. As I began saying this, he slowly started to walk away. But don't worry, everyone. I didn't let him escape. And I finished with, you know, <laughs> That uh, includes the rat, the cockroach, and also human beings have expanded quite a bit around planet Earth. You know, at that point, he was probably out the door. But the point <laughs> of all this is we have to respect those animals like the coyote, right? Like the opossum, like the crow, um, like the cockroach. I mean, these are animals that, thank the gods, are doing okay, even with us mucking things up a little bit in Mother Nature, you know? So, mm-hmm. got something Whoa. weird on here. What do we have here? I know exactly what this I is. I have absolutely no clue what that is. Hang on. It is an alien oh. spaceship, everyone, that we're yep. seeing right now. Oh, they're <laughs> um, no, that's not... pre-release burrowing owls? Uh, or the the opposite. Or pre-release. Yeah, yeah, post-release, pre-release. What's going on is, folks, so we have to – remember the – conversation i had about mites and ticks and we have to monitor the wild populations at times so this is what they can do so if you notice right now you see a towel over um, this tunneling system so this is a method for the conservation researchers to be able to contain the younger owls in a setting they're probably freshly hatched or not freshly hatched they got other eggs they haven't really come out of the burrows yet and so they need to tag them and process them make sure they're healthy again i mentioned i can't remember the name of this particular flea uh there's a particular flea they have to watch out for to make sure the babies are okay not being too affected by it so uh you're seeing some action going on with our conservation scientists and monitoring these babies i don't want you guys to feel too stressed out because we do everything super quickly uh the babies they see an opening they usually will leave like they would do if a predator were a burrow so they're doing their natural behavior uh the crew is right behind them because i've done this overnight with them as well so trust me they're all, all around right now they jump right in there i think brian you were with me that day right i mm-hmm. think um, yeah Chris, I can't remember if you were there that that one evening. But so, you know, we're there, we're watching, we process them. It takes like maybe less than five minutes for each baby to process, um, get a band on the baby, make sure it's healthy, and then they're put back into the burrow. So that's what you're watching right now. That's crazy. For a second, I thought it was like a weird possum. So that's cool. (laughs) Oh, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I just want to see a prey at him so bad. We have all this debris out in front. Why? I feel like every time you look at the burrow, it's just covered in, like, trash and crap. It's this particular one, because we've had this conversation about mm-hmm. this angle, too. Like, so I mentioned, like, in the past, burrowing owls, especially the males, the beginning of breeding season will bring things to the burrow. There's always a possibility that maybe he confused, like, items he would normally do naturally and said, like, I'm going to bring this bubble, bubble gum wrapper over to my, to my missus, you know? It could also just very well be, you know, most simplest answer, a lot of wind is blowing uh, litter uh, towards his burrow, which is unfortunate, mm. which is a reminder that, you know, I like to do it. I'm sure you guys do it, too. When you go on a hike, you pick, see some trash, mm-hmm. pick it up. I know it's not your trash. I understand. I carry gloves, and I have hand sanitizer in my car all the time. Ah, so yeah. I recommend it, guys. Just pick up a little trash, put it in the, in the trash can, and you're helping out Mother Nature, right? Ooh, look Whoa. at that. All the We've different angles you can chicken. see this. Ghost chicken. Yeah. Chimkin. Wow. As Brian says. Ch- chimkin. Chimkin. <laughs> chimkin. One chimkin. <laughs> oh, no. Brian has just like, Brian has this knack, for those who don't know, of <laughs> just like. Wordplay? Changing, changing words to mean, <laughs> to say things. And. Now we're all broken <laughs> is the problem. Like I go yeah. to a chicken restaurant and I'm like, mm, chimkin filet or like I want some chimkin nuggies. Yeah. And it just like it, I'm like you broke me. Like 
Yeah. The, the internet the, broke uh, me, so I'm just like, you know, passion, passing the love on you. <laughs> we, right before I'll we say started nuggies, this, though. <laughs> we were just having the conversation how outdated I feel when I have conversations with you with you three. Oh, and including Aaron, by the way, as well. So you guys, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not in the same generation or maybe, well, you know, besides all that, when I walk into their office, sometimes they're saying words that I'm, I'm sure it's uh, contemporary cultural references that I have no idea what they mean. And I believe it starts from people like Brian who come up with these funny, nuanced ways of saying things. So thank you for making me feel confused oh, yeah. when I walk into the office, buddy. I'm a vocabulary enabler. You know, I just see it on the internet and I just get stuck up here. <laughs> enabler. Ooh, look at this action wind shot. It's like, I think of like Pocahontas and hair blowing in the wind, you know. Just sitting there just experiencing life. So zen. Oh, now I got that. Now I got mm -hmm. that. And that soundtrack is fantastic, by the way. I recently re-listened to some of those older Disney soundtracks and yeah. Colors of the Wind is just so like fantastic Ooh, one of the best. Oh, i love colors of the wind i know that whole soundtrack for that movie just like dang it's a, pre it's a yeah. pretty solid one yeah I definitely slept oh 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 peek. Uh, peek. Peek. <laughs> <laughs> i love I'm it do that again <laughs> i don't know why i love that so much but that's man uh, it's good that's great good stuff it's good content today folks good just content Wicked content. wicked content. <laughs> bop, bop. Got a crazy hair day going on. Oh, or feather day. Yeah, right? Oh, I've been meaning to ask you, Marco, and this is really just like a personal yeah. curiosity. When birds oh, are pinning, it looks so horrifically painful. Because those feathers yeah. are just like little straight pieces that are coming out of them and it just looks like it would hurt so much do you know any i mean i, I know we don't really know how much pain i mean is, but yeah i was gonna say you know it's hard to really like go to a bird and like hey how's that yeah. feel right now you know <laughs> but but on different species i thought the same thing i've had these conversations with my uh bird nerds my beak geeks my avian avengers you know we notice these feather nuances you like that, that one, was a good Brian? one that one's for you like uh <laughs> these <laughs> with all sorts of species you guys i have my parrot by the way her pin feathers for a tail they're really big and they're they're coming out of the skin they're protruding out of the skin uh, my guess is probably a little itchy it's probably a little uncomfortable just and by that i mean i'm reading the bird's behavior and my years of experience reading bird behavior they look a little like mm, i got this thing i got to deal with you know um sometimes you get things that are called blood feathers in that case there's a lot of blood and veins going i mean that's the growth of the feather that's how they grow right mm -hmm. blood helps feed the growth of the feather sometimes in the casing this is my casing by the way can you tell this in the case Casing, uh, you might have a, an excessive amount of blood vessels still, and eventually that will wither away. Sometimes it doesn't, and it stays a blood feather, and the birds, you'll see them yank it out, you know, and just, ah, I don't want this anymore. So I'm sure it doesn't feel great. And we talked about this before, as far as pinning and growing feathers, that birds molt and that's what pinning is happening they're losing a feather they're growing a new one in place we're doing it too but with our hair it's just not as extreme because we don't have feathers right or or our nails growing it's all kind of the same concept it's made up of like keratin which i'm sure we all are familiar with but it's this ingredient to grow nails and hair and feathers and scales and whatnot um and so birds go through molts so uh for instance my birds in the springtime plucky my one of my calls she drops most of her feathers and looks like a big goofy bird and then all these pin feathers start growing in uh i mentioned the last time but in case you weren't there for the conversation raptors now that you know what raptors are t tend to molt longer throughout the year so hmm. i'll use a red tail as an example so if a red tail is it relying on flight to stoop or dive down and grab prey so if a red tail these are the wings these, are these little uh -huh. fingers of the wings so for red, red tail drops all her feathers say on the left wing she's gonna fly weird she's not gonna be able to turn or dive right and grab her prey and she could probably starve to death which isn't cool so instead raptors tend to lose him uh, one by one so she'll drop maybe the left primary feather that's the first one on the edge of the wing if she drops the first one then in the next couple days she's going to lose the same feather on the opposite wing to balance them out so for a oh, lot wow. of raptors it can take almost throughout the year to go through a molt that's not always the case but that's kind of the general mo for a lot of the raptors some can molt faster than others like burring owls they don't rely as much as flying like a peregrine or a peregrine falcon or a red tail might do uh, but it's just different variations of 
of molting and feather growth. But yeah, I think it's pretty uncomfortable, I would say, for the most part, especially if you have a mess of pin feathers. Sometimes you see little baby youngsters, right? Uh, they're growing their first new feathers in, and they look all pinny is, is the term we kind of use sometimes. So yeah, probably not the smoothest feeling in the world. You know? Yeah, it's like when we see the African penguins, they kind of go through like an annual molt, so it all happens at one time. And they just look yep. so decrepit and miserable. And they just sit there and they look like, God, I cannot believe I have to do this. Yeah, and they're just mad. And now they're not waterproof, so they can't go in the water. And so they just sit there up on the rocks just looking like, don't even look at me. You know, they're yeah. just I know, so right? Mad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it reminds me of middle school for some reason. <laughs> we all, you know, we all yeah, remember that. It's like you that. get a bad haircut or something and you're like, God, I'll never recover. Yeah. I, I yeah. need to molt. <laughs> if only we could have molted. Can you ma- I'm so glad. Like, so many people that I know went mm. through, and I'm sorry if you did this, like that big scene hairstyle where it was like just across your face like this. And uh, I'm looking oh, at photos I've of like my that. friends' MySpaces or, you know, <laughs> Facebook in 2008, and they have the super dark eyeliner with the just like the the most side part. Like this, it's just at your Sad ear. flap. Yeah, it's just <laughs> so aggressive. Good times. Anyway. It still uh, makes for some yeah, really good TikToks no. now. I was really into uh, the crow, and if you guys remember that, so I was like, oh, I had yeah. a, I had a gothic face, so I had the long black hair. I didn't part it that way, but it went down this way, and it, it always have to fall in front of my face, you know, for that pensive look, you know, yeah. so dramatic. Uh, yeah, like nobody gets me. Life is so hard. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, <laughs> the things we talk about on the... <laughs> it's great. <Yeah. laughs> oh, look at this little guy, so cute. So cute. I love it. How many adults won? I'm just waiting for something crazy. Like, we've been doing the burrowing owls long enough. I'm ready to see, like, a mountain lion or something, you know? Gee, something. I know. I think I know. we only ever saw, like, the squirrel that one time, mm-hmm. and that was about it. <laughs> I like doing this. Ooh. That is, yeah. Ghost bird. ghost chicken. He does look a little more on the alert. I would say that, mm-hmm. like, maybe yeah. something got him to, like, they look a little more tighter. The feathers are streamlined almost, you know, and he's kind of doing a duck. Like, maybe maybe a predator did walk by. Maybe a coyote, possibly, or something. He's just kind of making sure and looking. Aaron said we need the human eye again like we had last week. Oh, <laughs> was my a, gosh. That was a rare treat. You had a human eye? <laughs> it was terrifying. Yeah. And during the Ken- the Kenya cams, it just like we went through a different photo, and then it was just like someone's face. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You need, you need to go watch. You need to watch that footage because all of our faces just went like. What? <laughs> I'm gonna have to make that a highlight. That sounds hilarious. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> This looks like a 70s album again for me. They really, so many album covers could be made from burrowing owls. Like just their facial expressions and how they Seriously. stand. So good. I don't know why it screams 70s to me. I think the brown variation, all the different Yeah, because the 70s you know? were brown really into Hades. sepia. Everything was Oh, weird. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a thing. Everybody's vibing. Look at that. Yep. All oh, good. Good stuff, man. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. Is he carrying something oh, and dropped it? Might be. Yeah. Yeah, looks like he oh. is. He had something in his beak and then dropped it. What is it? What is it? Mm. Ooh. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to tell. I yeah. know. Oh. oh, and he grabbed it again with his talon. It almost. <laughs> I don't want to get too graphic with everyone, but it almost looks like a field mouse that he used his little hook beak to, you know, crunch, 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 crunch. So now it's maybe a flattened field mouse that he's does, about to enjoy does kind of look like a field mouse with the yellow the white like that's belly. that's yeah that's exactly what i was thinking too the little yeah. white underbelly darker mm. top side of the body that would be my guess for that one uh, mm. it's like i don't know it's good i know it's good it's the circle of life it's the way it's meant to be it's okay everything's fine <laughs> And it rules us all. And it, it does rule us all. Ooh, somebody rules got us. all up in our face. Ooh. Let's see. Who is that? We will never know. <laughs> <laughs> that could be anybody. Nope. I know. It almost looks like fur to me. But... Yeah, I was about to say, it doesn't even look so much like wings. I know. It's really hard to tell. It's just too close. Hey, maybe, it's a, it. maybe it's a ground squirrel that climbed on top of the camera and then the, the oh, tail. I would not be just, surprised. You know? Yeah. Good guess. You know? That sounds like something they would do. Jerks. Look at 
Nice. It was very windy that day. I know. Yeah. Yeah. When was this taken? Let's see. Uh, 2021. Okay. May. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. Oh, I like this one. Ooh, very majestic. Oh, oh yeah. Like Look at those colors, too. I love that yellow color on the eye. Mm -hmm. I also love that their eyes, while they're similar, they're not exactly the same color. Like some are more yellow, oh, some are yeah. more orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I think we talked about this last conversation with owls. That a lot of the strictly nocturnal owls, you'll see dark brown or black, like a mm. like a barn owl or a mottled owl, as an example. And usually, a lot of the diurnal, the daytime owls, like the burring owl. But even though that is a misnomer, because we call them di diurnal, but really, like they can be up at nighttime, like we're seeing right now. And there's a term crepuscular, which I'm sure a lot of people know. But if not, those are animals usually active during dusk and dawn. And great horned owl is a perfect example of that. And like, what's so advantageous of being crepuscular, right? But think about it: if you're hanging around when the sun's going up or going down, that great horned owl is waiting for a lot of animals to either come in for the night in the burrows or exit, you know, for the evening. And that's where he's waiting to do that piece of resistance, you know. Look at this little baby mm -hmm. all fluffed up. Me just quickly changing oh, it to shimmy. Baby. <laughs> is that a Jimmy, band can you tell that looks like a band to me it looks, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It looks like two one or he's two. got two yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boop. <laughs> waffle president welcome to the chat thanks for cruising by oh nice love the zoo want to work at the zoo one day yeah waffle president what can, kind uh, of animals join us. would you want to take care of if you could take care of any of them because it's there's a lot of them there's a lot of options there are a lot Carnivores, herbivores, birds, reptiles. Basically all of it, huh? <laughs> well, which is, they which didn't is say great. that. I'm saying that. They say oh, hippo. Oh, oh, oh. I, hippo. I can't see the chat. Ooh, I know. I'm sorry, Marco. I'm hippo. confusing you. Good one. <laughs> hippo is really good. Um, mm -hmm. Is this person a younger individual or an adult? Can we find that out? Is that possible? Because uh, I, I can give some advice if you're really thinking about getting uh, involved in zoo careers i feel like it's always good to share yeah. so go ahead marco it right. is always yeah, good yeah. To share. now you know it's it's a um, you know we call them wildlife care specialists here in the alliance but think about a zookeeper that's kind of it's the same term but we're kind of shifting a little bit because uh, being a zookeeper wildlife care specialist there's a lot of skill sets that are particular to this job right so what i always tell people especially if you're a youth uh and you want working at a zoo like us a lot of people apply for these positions so you want to set yourself up for success so for one um, we have a lot of nonprofits, a lot of areas that do wildlife, like Project Wildlife as an example here in San Diego that as a youngster you can volunteer for so that's my number one volunteer as as young as you can and gain experience the animal world it's a pretty tight-knit community so I'm, I'm gonna use Brian as an example let's let's picture 12 um, year old Brian and Brian wants to get involved being a zookeeper so I would tell Brian at 12 years old I know don't flash back too far buddy I don't want to lose you but now think of Brian wanting to get involved with wildlife I would say young little Brian I'm gonna kneel down a little bit because he's a little shorter little Brian what you need to do is you need to volunteer and say project wildlife or any other area in your home base and learn about wildlife Taylor was talking about oh I'm done talking to 12 year old Brian you can you can not like the Brian like Taylor was talking about you know carnivores and reptiles and birds and yada 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 when you volunteer in these uh, facilities you'll get to learn about different kind of animals and learn like maybe maybe you're not a bird guy maybe you're a reptile person or maybe you like fish maybe you like insects so volunteering can help you with that and also us being a tight-knit community we know that oh 12 year old Brian did he work with that guy oh he was great he worked so hard he took direction great and it builds your name in that respect because the second is that networking and volunteer you get your name out there right and present yourself because uh, you want to put your best foot forward and set yourself up for success because the third thing that's just as important so we talked about volunteering we talked about networking and number three I'm sure everyone knows what I'm going to say is school. Go to school. Get a degree. Um, there are so hundreds of people apply for one zookeeper job, one wildlife care specialist job at the Wildlife Alliance here. So that would – you become full threat in that regard. So you not only have the experience because you volunteered at a young age. They 
not only already know who you are because you work so hard, but you also have the scholastic, the the academic skill set that helps you with that as well. Um, like general biology, um, applied husbandry, there's uh, conservation science, there's so many other degrees too that you can apply yourself to that and that'll help set you up, buddy. So that's what I recommend. Good stuff. And that's so perfect that you had said that, um, Marco, because right when you had started, Waffle said that they're 13 and they were going to start volunteering at the Louisville Zoo to get experience. So Wonderful, okay. Waffle. That is great. And I also just want to point out, you guys can find me. I'm Zoology Marco on TikTok and Instagram. And you can always DM me and I can always help you out with more advice if you need it. So I'm, we're always there for you, uh, friends. So that's a, a great first step, Waffle, to do that, to volunteer and gain some more experience. Good on yeah, you. Yeah, because Marco, you've been that in this space super- since you were 17, right? Uh, yeah, I started when I was 16, 16. actually. Wow. 16, yeah. It's a long time. That is, is. Yeah. And, and Birdie said, I know someone who's living her dream at the zoo. That's super cool. What are they doing at the zoo? Yeah. Hi, Birdie. <laughs> Do you know Birdie? <laughs> That's my sister. Uh-huh, so it's Kirsten. Kirsten. Oh, it's about That's you. That's adorable. How meta. Kirsten, are you living your dream at the zoo? I am. I am. <laughs> she no knows it. I brought I to her all the time about it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, by the way, this little guy jumped on a bug or something. Or maybe just a rock. Like, I'm going to bounce. God, that's... bounce. Look at Aaron plugging Marco's Instagram in the chat. Well done. Oh, <laughs> thank you, friend. And Marco's also the host of a new podcast. Well, it's not new. It's in the second season, but he's a new host. You're right, and we can actually yeah. officially talk about it, guys. So if you haven't followed our podcast, I love podcasts. And so I just found out I'm going to be co-hosting. It's called Amazing Wildlife with Rick Schwartz and myself, two uh, wildlife ambassadors, San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. March 24th will be the first episode, and we're going to talk all about butterflies so highly recommend it and you know you can hear that on iheart or any other avenue where you listen to your podcast you're gonna have a great time i hope you i hope you guys uh, are you able to tease out any episodes marco or is it too early for that Mm, i can talk to you about you know we talked about springtime and butterflies so i thought i knew a lot about butterflies and i love them already but after i recorded this episode my mind was blown. I almost want to share them right now, but I'm not going to because I learned some really cool stuff about butterflies that you will find out too uh, when you listen to the first episode on March 24th. And we're going to also be highlighting all sorts of wildlife from Amazonia. or So one is called Amazon in South America and talk about unique species there. So there's going to be really cool stuff throughout the year and you'll be hearing more about that i'll pitch it on my social media feed maybe you get a little hints on our main feeds as well about it so that's awesome that'll be fun stuff oh i love that i'm so excited i know me too i'm super stoked look at this little baby trying to offer like a little leaf hoop to your dad or mom (laughs) it's like like, be next to me oh look at that that's cute i love that (laughs) owls are the best nice guys we're almost at a we're almost at a hundred ghosts. We, I don't know if we came up with the ghost. We still oh, haven't right. named the ghosts. What are we at? We're at 92 ghosts? Okay. So for next Thursday, 92. we will have to, we'll have a poll set up for next Thursday. And, uh, mm. and I don't think we have a whole lot of names. It's like Casper and a couple of others. So, so we'll just, I feel like it should be named Sandy, but that's okay. That's Sandy. unpopular. Sandy ghost. Okay. Okay. Well, Sandy ghost. San Diego Zoo. Oh wow, so Sandy the ghost. But that's <laughs> listen. Okay, everyone. This this is what I work with. This, this this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, we're almost at time, so I just want to give us a second to say thank you so much for joining us for um for today's episode of Wild Watch. This has been super fun and enlightening, and um yeah, awesome. Another ghost in the day. Sweet. Well, thank you for joining us, Marco. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Um, and we'll be back next week on next Thursday at two o'clock. So yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah. See if I can, oh, what have I done? I've made mistakes.